This is a video on section 4.2, precipitation reactions. Precipitation reactions are also known as metathesis reactions. That's metathesis, and they are also known as double replacement reactions. What you're looking at is a table, table 4.2, which you'll find on, in your textbook on page 120. I'm sorry, not 120, 122. And what it is, it's a table of the solubility rules for common ionic compounds in water at 25 degrees Celsius. You're going to need this table because it's going to help you to make predictions about precipitation reactions. So remember, a precipitation reaction, which is also known as a metathesis reaction or double replacement reaction, is basically a reaction between two electro electrolytes in aqueous solution. When the two electrolytes in aqueous solution get together, a precipitate is formed. A precipitate is a solid that forms from the cation of one of the electrolytes with the anion of the, of the other electrolyte. So the cation of one gets together with the anion of the other, and together they form an insoluble solid. They do not stay dissolved in the water. They form an insoluble solid. To be insoluble means basically that you are incapable of being dissolved in that particular solvent. That's not necessarily 100% true, and we'll find out later on that even a tiny bit of that material will still stay dissolved in solution, but for all intents and purposes, for now, we'll say that insolubility means that not one part of that particular compound will dissolve in a particular solution. So, as we were saying, it's about taking two electrolytes in aqueous solution, mixing them together, and having them form a solid precipitate. So for example, okay, let's say we have silver nitrate, silver nitrate, and that's an aqueous solution reacting with sodium chloride. And remember, all of these are aqueous, so I'll do the best I can to put a Q there, which, remember, means aqueous. It's a little tough to do without a stylus. I'm using this with my finger. So there's aqueous. And when they react and form, we end up with silver chloride, which turns out to be a solid. And sodium nitrate, which turns out to be aqueous still. So basically what we did was we took the silver cation and put it together with the anion of the other electrolyte. And together we noticed that they form a precipitate. We took the cation of the second electrolyte mixed it together with the nitrate of the first electrolyte, and we notice that when those two come together, they basically don't do anything. They do not form a precipitate, which is in its, its own self a separate compound. They stay dissolved in solution. And so what we have here is an equation that represents the particular process. Now, in chemistry, particularly in AP chemistry, it's good to be able to write the balanced chemical equation for many of these reactions. We also want to go a step further and write what is known as the net ionic equation. So, how would we write the net ionic equation for this? Well, let's get rid of some of this stuff here. All right. So for this reaction, because only the silver ion is reacting, we would write Ag+. Plus. AQ. And only the chloride ion is reacting, so we'd write Cl minus AQ and react to form AgCl, which is a solid. So in a net ionic equation, we're only showing those species that react and those species that are formed. It's the net, because it only shows you what's reacting, what's formed, and because it's dealing with ions, net ionic equation. So, since the sodium and the nitrate 
remain in solution because we have the symbol AQ next to it, we know that AQ means aqueous. Because they remain in solution, we see, my friends, that we only need to include those things which actually react and those things which actually, actually form to do the net ionic equation. As we saw previously, yeah, we should be able to write the overall reaction because what we saw was the overall reaction and it shows everything that's going on. But of course, the net ionic equation is also significant. So you're asking yourself, self, how did Mr. Crisanti know to find or to, how do you, how, excuse me, let's try that again. How did he make the prediction that the silver and the chlorine, or the silver and the chloride together, got together and made silver chloride as the solid, but the sodium and the nitrate didn't do anything, they stayed in solution? Well, now here is when the solubility chart comes in handy, okay? We look at the solubility rules in the chart. They say that compounds containing alkali metals, such as lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium, and the ammonium ion are make compounds which are soluble. That means any compound that contains these ions is automatically soluble. Now, we know that the sodium and the nitrate remain soluble based upon these rules. Also, if we look down further, nitrates, right, nitrates, acetates, bicarbonates, chlorates, and perchlorates are always soluble. So, ionic compounds that contain group 1 metals and ammonium, and ionic compounds which contain nitrates, acetates, bicarbonates, chlorates, and perchlorates are always soluble in water at 25 degrees Celsius. So that would explain why the sodium and the nitrate would not form a precipitate. What about the silver and the chloride, though? Well, according to this, halides here, excuse me, I didn't mean to cross out the sulfates, halides here are soluble compounds. So in other words, any compound, any ionic compound in solution with the that contains the chloride ion should be soluble. But there are exceptions, and one of those exceptions is the silver ion. So based upon this rule, I can make the prediction that silver ions and chloride ions will form a precipitate that we showed you before. If we take a look at the rules further down, we see that all of these species are always insoluble, but have exceptions to the rule, and those go back to the alkali metals that we have above, and ammonium. And of course, hydroxide is always insoluble. Any hydroxide compounds are insoluble, with the exception of, again, these guys, the group one metals, and ammonium, and of course, the barium ion. And that's it for precipitation reactions, or metathesis, or double replacement reactions, whichever you want to call them. Um, give some a try, and of course, if you have any questions, see myself or Mr. Walsh, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good night.